All right, uh, for the recording sake, hello everyone, uh, and welcome. Uh, this is the last day of the uh, of the Victoria Cycle PTG, um, and um, it's probably oddly really early or really late in most people's time time zone. So we, we're going to wait um, and see people maybe catch up uh, during this meeting, but we'll get started with the. Uh, uh, agenda. We might have to shuffle it a little bit uh, based on uh, who joins us when. Um, but for now, we're going to get started with uh, share and share size quotas and limits per share server. Uh, so Douglas and Carlos, uh, it's all yours. Take it away. All right. Uh, thanks. So uh, this uh, this topic is something uh, we want to uh, implement. Uh, and uh, it's basically uh, the ability to uh, have uh, quotas for, oops, let me see here. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, my dogs are, are barking here. I don't know if you guys can, can hear it. So let me see. Yeah. Oh, where is it? Just a second. Oh. Oops. All right, so uh, I just missed the, the talk here in the, the pages, uh, but I can proceed without it. So uh, basically uh, we have the need to uh, create, uh, to, to control the, the amount of shares or uh, share gigabytes that are uh, in, the, in a share server. So uh, we wanted to implement uh, something that would allow us to uh, have this kind of control. So uh, a shared server, for instance, uh, would uh, have a new quota in the quota system from Manila. So uh, we would have uh, a new quota called uh, max shares for uh, shared servers, for, for instance, and uh, while creating uh, shares, uh, in JDS through mode, Manila would verify if there are available quotas uh, to do so. And if there isn't, uh, a new shared server would be uh, created. So uh, the administrator would have a, a, a bit more of control under those operations. And uh, the same to uh, uh, would happen to uh, Gigabytes. So, if uh, the the quota, the defined quota for our share gigabytes in a share server exceeded uh, during the the share server, uh, like during the the share creation, and uh, we would, uh, as we validated that in the in the share manager or some other level, we could uh, verify uh, if there's need to create a new. Uh, a new share server, and uh, if there's need to, uh, we would create. So uh, we it would be done by uh, triggering the creation of a new share server in the provider and provide share server for share uh, method if there's need to uh, in the share manager. Uh, and operations like uh, creation or deletion or extension shrink of shares uh, would be affected as well since like if I'm creating a share I would, I would need to uh, validate if there are like uh, you know quotas for that and and so on so uh, but basically uh, I mean this uh, some of these operations uh, would be uh, only controlled in the provide share server for share uh, method so uh, it would validate if there is need to create uh, in case the operation is like extension, uh, we may have it may cause a problem uh, since the it may exceed the quota for a given share server. 
So uh, I can think of some ways uh, of handling with this. Uh, the first of them is uh, to block the operation and raise an exception, but I do not think uh, it's, it's something good uh, to happen. Or we could just allow the, the, the extension to happen and uh, allow the quota to be exceeded. Uh, we have already discussed that uh, before for managing shares, for instance. So uh, I think these are two ways uh, to, uh, of handling this and we could uh, have some sort of uh, message or, or something like that, uh, granting the abstraction of uh, those messages if, if there's need to. And, uh, but if we are talking about controlling the number of resources or gigabytes in a given shared server, I think uh, we should also account uh, something like replicas and snapshots uh, if uh, we are talking about gigabytes since, uh, I mean, if I want a share server to uh, have like, for instance, one terabyte and uh, I, I'm only uh, counting uh, shares, uh, it's not that accurate since, uh, I mean, uh, a share server can contain also share replicas and uh, snapshots and uh, something like that. So, uh, I mean, if the control is about gigabytes, we should account as well as these other entities and uh, uh, that's something I thought uh, is, uh, like we should do. And uh, if the administrator does not want to use this limit, it could uh, set to minus one. So uh, it would like the unlimited, uh, unlimited amount of uh, gigabytes in a shared server or shares in a shared server. And uh, it would allow the administrator to have unlimited resources and uh, it could uh, only count, for instance, for uh, gigabytes or for shares, and the administrator could choose or which ones are the, the ones that they want to uh, to control the resources for. So uh, my thoughts on about this right now, uh, if it's like uh, if we do this and like an administrator does not want to control that, I think we if we're going to implement this, we should uh, perhaps start uh, this quota. Uh, as default as unlimited, since uh, some clouds, some clouds like uh, may have uh, a lot of uh, shares in share servers right now, and uh, some administrators may uh, start to realize that they, their shares are being created in other share servers, and uh, you know, uh, I, I mean, uh, starting uh, with uh, minus one, it would prevent that, and the administrator would uh, that once this feature would uh, control this, and it will require some, some other uh, validations in, in some other levels. So uh, we will need to, to modify some, uh, add some new database key results. So uh, it would also need uh, some, some knowledge from the administrator that, uh, I mean, if you are creating a new shared servers, new allo uh, network allocations would be needed. So uh, that's, uh, that's some point uh, the administrator will uh, need to know. And uh, something we, we wanted to, uh, to know about this is if uh, a new spec or like spec is needed or something like that. Uh, so uh, that's basically uh, this, this point I've, I've found out uh, during the investigation of this. I mean, uh, we have the, our current uh, quota system, which uh, works kind of fine, and uh, we would uh, add new new quotas for that. So uh, I wanted to to bring the discussion up and uh, know uh, if you guys have some concerns or some some things to uh, to bring to the discussion. So, no. Yeah. Uh, no, I was trying to uh, trying to understand the flow through what you were saying. So, the the deal here is that you want uh, you want the administrator to control a couple of things on uh, at a share server level. So right now, the way things work is that the um, is Manila it's Manila share manager logic completely relies on the share driver to determine when it needs a new share so share server. Right. So, I mean, this could be done today with your, within your driver by saying, you know, there's there's a there's a limit on the number of shares that you want, etc. 
and that the driver can somehow enforce this uh, using using some sort of configuration options or some sort of share type extra specs that are scoped to your driver. So that's that's one, and 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 that that at least was was the uh, was the idea bit behind. Uh, the share manager not really controlling the share server at all like in the sense before before it even says hey driver give me a share server it says do you have a share server for this do you need a share server do you need more network allocations um for uh, to to create a new share server so that's the kind of design that that's currently there so if we were to make decisions and tell the share server tell the share driver that you you're now forced to create a new um, share server that would be different from what the current design is it, i mean because i mean for for all the this thing there is maybe some of these backends that are uh, you know maybe there are uh, there are distributed storage systems or um, you know they they might want to scale in a completely different way compared to let's say um, a NetApp or something which which you don't really care about the number of uh, share servers that you're spinning up um, uh, or or any of those alike systems. I got it. Uh, I I think that uh, I haven't uh, take look at it yet. Uh, like, uh, but. I, f I mean, it sounds like uh, really uh, a, a great idea to to do uh, things like this. So uh, we could like have uh, a new capability to say uh, things like that by the backend. So we the driver could verify that, and uh, we we check if uh, there's need to uh, to create a new a new shared server. So uh, I mean uh, the. Basically, we, we have started thinking uh, on the solution about the, uh, the using the Quora system. But if we are uh, willing to do that using uh, this uh, the, the current abstraction that uh, current exists, I, I mean I could take a look as well on the on, on how implementing it uh, using the driver. But I mean uh, I I would need to to think uh, more and uh, to to take a look on the the driver side to to check that so if if it were the coda system how would you control it what what is the idea here like in the sense would you have a new type of coda because right now we constrain it based on project share type user these uh, and and a combination of these right the project being the common uh, denominator here so the, what, what, i mean if you if you now said we now also want to constrain shares based on the share server we are not really stopping it at the API, correct? Because we're not making this quota decision at the API anymore. Uh, for this one, we're we're actually going into the share manager and saying, you know, how many uh, shares does this have? Uh, does this particular share server have, and stuff, which doesn't sound like quota enforcement to me. It's more like a a, ta a table of how many share. I mean, keep, keeping a tab of how many shares. How what what is the capacity that's currently there? So it 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 could as uh, well be you know in the share server model itself, um, this sort of tabulation one. And the other aspect is um, I, I mean, and the reason I'm also telling you that is because there there is going to be um, I mean we we are. We, our Coda system is not perfect. Uh, it's I mean it's far from good to be to start with, uh, and there, there's there's actually an effort to overhaul that across OpenStack. I mean this was there since like years, and finally there is uh, a, a workable solution that Nova and Cinder are exploring. Glance uh, is also trying to do that. So the, it, conceivably it might come along to even Manila as some sort of a uh, Unified limits solution, right? So you you go to, you talk to uh, an administrator, talks to Keystone, tells Keystone what 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 limits to enforce, and we would uh, we would talk to Keystone from the API before we do anything. Uh, so so it's a, some something like uh, I mean so, uh, like right now what we do with uh, the whole auth middleware. We before we we uh, we. Uh, allow you to create any resource we check with keystone who you are and and whether you are who you claim you uh, you are etc 
so it it the the this whole coda thing might actually disappear so building something on top of that that is not going to be enforced in the api but in the share manager will not make sense if this goes away yeah i got your point and uh about the first point you mentioned it would be controlled like uh for uh i mean uh, configurable in the in the way it is so it could be set for uh projects uh and uh share types and and so on so it would, would really use the the current resource of the, our current uh, quota system but thinking in now uh, in the second point you just mentioned that uh, it could uh, like disappear in the future i mean uh doing this kind of things uh like handling this uh in a, in a level like more closer to the driver i think uh, it would be nicer uh, so uh, we uh, wouldn't have to uh, like get preoccupied with uh, these kinds of things in the future so uh, but i still need to, to take a look on that yet to uh, to understand some things and uh, to to check what would be needed to get this behavior uh, like implemented so that's that's my thing. So, so my thought on that, uh, we have these uh, two different implementations. One uh, that Carlos starts saying about quotas, we can, uh, with this implementation, limit uh, the number of shares in a share server uh, for uh, a quota for each tenant, and this might be a use case for some 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 customer. And the other hand, uh, no. The first solution uh, doesn't uh, don't care about the the, the back end in this case, so it's agnostic uh, to the back end. Uh, and the second uh, proposal that Gato was saying, it's more uh, related to the back end. Maybe we have some uh, some drivers or back ends that have their limits and and might want to apply a different number of shares per share server. So this is more related to the back end than all tenants. Uh, uh, we receive the same quota or same limit uh, for that. So what uh, we are probably going to do is to collect feedback on our side uh, and propose the best solution. Uh, I think that uh, proposing a, a quota or a limit uh, for the backend side, that second solution uh, seems to be okay also. So uh, we are going probably going to to propose uh, one of these two solutions based on well, the, the feedback of customers. So I think that uh, there is a question there that is to, uh, to tell if you need a spec or a little spec for that. So it will depend on the solution. Maybe the solution that uh, the first solution that uh, we need an API for the enemy to configure uh, to configure the quotas for each tenant, this one uh, for sure deserves uh, an spec uh, since uh, uh, we are changing APIs, adding APIs, and so on. Uh, and maybe the second solution, uh, uh, since it's a, a back end uh, configuration, we might not need. So uh, that is my thought. Maybe they both uh, deserve uh, a spec. For, for better explanations on the implementation. If there is a if there is something that's common across backend GS, I, I at least I mean if there is no API impact whatsoever, yeah, we could go the light spec route uh, where you know we don't have to uh, explain the whole thing. Just write a, write up what exactly you're doing at the share manager level, etc. Uh, that is that will affect all of the backends. That, that do that do share servers today but uh, i was also going to check there is this other uh, implementation that we kind of started discussing um, a while ago and this was uh, a lot to do with the generic driver at that point and the the way um, uh, the, uh, this contributor chose to approach it was he he had a uh, a, an option called max shares per share server and 
he would he would enforce this by uh, at the share manager across all backends so this is a this is a default section config option at this point but then of course i mean like carlos was saying you you this isn't just related to the number of shares you also want to do this based on capacity uh, and other things and capacity is always the confusing one especially if this is a thin provision back end etc we don't know exactly how much is being consumed at the point at, at this point we we know how much has been allocated we don't i mean and for, historically we've said you know we've we've just been hand wavy about snapshots which i mean in in the worst case snapshots could take as much space as the original share itself and we have not uh, we, we we don't have any kind of accounting for that why am i so the, uh, implementing some sort of a generic solution based on capacity will be hard yeah yeah i uh, agree on that so um i'm I'm in favor of, of a spec if we want to move ahead with this um, for the reason that I, I really do think that quotas are something that in OpenStack need to work more consistently uh, across the different projects. The user experience for quotas, you know, for instance, there's a command absolute limits, you know, in general. Uh, the the user expectation is that quotas will they do not work perfectly the same in the different projects but the user expectation is that they will and there is a direction to drive them to 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 more consistency um, and I think Gotham's point about them being API layer checks currently I think in every project we can check this um, is correct or it's a it's a good concern at least you know if manila is the only one to start involved you know doing cross service checks with respect to quotas then um it's not that i'm fear being different i don't want us to be different for in ways that cause different experiences with users without a compelling reason to do that so I'm not necessarily against this, Carlos. I, I just really, um, and I think there's a lot of good thought in it, uh, but I think we have to write it down and we have to think it through and understand the implications beyond, perhaps beyond just the immediate problem that you're, you're working. Um, the, the immediate problem seems, you know, good, good thought and good work on it, you know, <laughs> uh, but I honestly have not, um, thought through the systemic aspect of it with respect to how it fits in OpenStack if we do this with a, a quota solution. Um, I wish I'd thought of more about it in advance. Yeah, so yeah. I'm making here, Carlos. I mean, I'm so I'm saying, yeah, yeah, you got to write it down, and we might say no because it doesn't integrate well with the rest of. OpenStack uh, quotas, um, you know, both with respect to possible futures and also kind of conceptually with how they work today um, um, after you do that work, you know. So, you know, we could even invest the, the you know, not too much time in the spec before, you know, I don't want to, I don't want you to work and work and work and work on it. And then at the last minute, we say, oh, no, 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 that doesn't, that doesn't fit with OpenStack as a whole. Uh, we're not going to do that. You know, but let's have something written down and have a conversation soon uh, where, we, where we figure whether that will be a, a, a big objection to going forward to this way or not. I'm less concerned about the, the details you've thought through about how to make it work. You know, I'm less concerned about those, although obviously we'll talk about them too. That was the long answer, sorry. Uh, no problem. Thanks, Tom, uh, for your great your thoughts on that. I mean, uh, we could, like, uh, I could take a look on that. Uh, 
investigate a, a little better uh, the the solutions and the, the like uh, what would work better in, in this scenario and uh, try to write thing, things down in, if uh, if I, depending on my my investigations or uh, you know I can uh, bring this up to you guys. Yeah, uh, I don't. Uh, I also don't have any problem with the solution of having backend setting this configuration at driver level. So we just need to to uh, to get some feedbacks from customers on that before uh, designing something. Yeah, true. So, uh, what's the uh, what's the use case here? Because I I I certainly have one uh, when I think of the NF uh, the Ceph NFS driver, for instance. Um, which today does not do this, but uh, in the future, uh, we, we we also uh, thought of the scaling aspect of um, for for uh, share servers itself and uh, and NFS Ganesha, for instance. And the concern there for us is uh, literally that uh, you know we uh, it, NFS Ganesha is a user of the Ceph file system. And we want to actually shard the Ceph file system into into logical bits where we are not really, uh, you know, making one user, uh, you know, do a ton of work with the Ceph file system. Like it, it, it's it's going to be this one super user, uh, and and might be might be bottlenecked. Uh, especially if that one user is uh, is orchestrating stuff for a bunch of different uh, uh, things. The, I mean, if if we are sharing the same underlying file system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's the direction of us uh, thinking about it, uh, at least. In and and these are the initial thoughts for us. It's it's basically sharing the load on uh, on uh, on the different directories that we are exporting. But what is the uh, use case that's coming in from your customers? Uh, there isn't too much detail on that, but uh, basically they want to limit the, the size of the uh, the shared servers. Uh, they are handling uh, too many volumes inside a single uh, shared server, and this is difficult to manage and to move across uh, a different cluster when they need to uh, start uh, doing some balancing and stuff like that. There is no uh, specific detail regarding having different uh, quotas or limits per tenant. So since we don't have these details and that we, we need to talk to them and, 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 and talk about different solutions. Yeah. So if a, if a customer had your backend um, and also, I don't know, say a Dell EMC backend, uh, both doing DHS a SQL true with uh, share servers, would you want the same um, the same quotas set for both backends for a, for a given tenant? Yeah, it will depend on the the backend capacity, right? Yeah, so, right. Yeah, it would so be more would, related to the. So, so in your proposal, you would have different share types for each backend per tenant that that set the per tenant quota appropriately for that back end. Yeah, we could set that for, for share type as well when the uh, share type like uh, shares being scheduled uh, with a, a given share type and uh, that share type uh, would like link directly to a specific backend. So uh, I mean the, th the thrust of my reasoning here is that the 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 intelligence to figure out what the limits ought to be probably are back end specific rather than um, some kind of abstraction you know I mean it's not a uh, to me it's not a natural thing to say okay there are the there's a group of backends that uh, we know about that have certain kind of characteristics that mean this kind of quota would be appropriate to them it'd be more like no this is a NetApp particular model or this is a Dell EMC particular model, or this is a CephFS file system that has been deployed uh, 
with a limited scale versus a large scale or something like that. Um, you know, it would be knowledge of the particular backend and the way it has been deployed, uh, the model of the storage, et cetera, which seem to me more like backend specific type limits than um, the kind of thing quotas are used for today. Um, just, just giving you my impression. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, Tom. Yeah. I agree as well. Yeah. So we are going to move forward on that and get this feedback. And uh, we might uh, present them this solution and see if it's uh, uh, their needs. Yeah. I mean, technically, besides coders, besides share type extra specs, um, I don't think we have any other way that you could you could do some project metadata uh, with 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 Manila. So if at all, if, if this is time to even think about something like that, which is you know a project level directive to your uh, to, to a given uh, this thing, maybe this this is uh, you know an ideal candidate. I want to do something for this project, given this backend rather than um, you know have a global configuration option or something even that's that's that even that may not be uh, because you might want to do this differently for different projects yeah that's the other side of it you know i was i was driving the back end specific aspect of it but the other dimension here that was leading you to this is that you want to per tenant which is project so i i understand that motivation Yes, yeah. this is also uh, my last work. It's a good idea. Thanks, Gautam. Awesome. Is there anything else, Carlos? I don't think so. Anybody else? All right. Um, hearing none, I think we can um, move to the next topic. Thanks for. Uh, bringing this up, Carlos. Let's move to uh, the next topic, which is optimizing the coda processing logic for manage share. Uh, just gonna, okay. We have uh, Hayek seen here, and uh, he's gonna be leading this topic. And Carlos has created an etherpad for us. So we're going to do a better job today of actually typing that stuff into the etherpad than we did the other day. So let's do that. Um, Carlos, do you want to, do you want to present screen? Uh, I think I can give you permissions. Uh, I think I already have. So let oh me yeah. Give some second. Right, I was checking something, but right. let me share here. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yes, All we can. Right. All right. Yes. I've seen the floor is yours. You can um, get started when you want. Uh. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I found there is a pop, uh, there is a problem about a quarter. Um, when we um, manage a share, um, uh, if we uh, field to manage a share, maybe uh, it's a field in scheduler or in the driver. Uh, 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 I found if uh, it filled to scheduler, um, <clears throat> uh, then uh, it uh, does not uh, commit. Uh, uh, com uh, it does does not commit the quarter. Uh, then, uh, uh, then uh, when delete or I manage the share, uh, the quarter 
uh, is also uh, deal, uh, uh, is also deal with uh, uh, deal, deal with the, uh, the, the color. I, I think the color will be more, the color will be wrong. Uh, and, uh, 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 and if field to measure here, the size is uh, 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 is one. I think this is unreasonable. Uh, 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 if we can't, uh, uh, we we cannot get the real size in the backend storage. We should uh, make the size of share to be zero. Uh, uh, in, in in this topic, uh, uh, I uh, I I think we should uh, uh, add two more studios of share. Uh, they are manage uh, uh, manage error deleting. Uh, this studio uh, is when uh, when we uh, to delete uh, the share of uh, 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 error. Error manager, we change the schedule to manager error deleting. Uh, uh, do you, uh, do you, uh, delete uh, the share uh, uh, if the uh, if the schedule of share is uh, manager error deleting? Uh, we uh, we will skip deal with the quarter. Uh, That's because uh, we. <coughs> We fail to measure measure the, the share, uh, and uh, and have not uh, committed the quarter, uh, 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 and uh, uh, it is the uh, same with uh, I manager the share. Uh, if <coughs> uh, we we. Uh, we we uh, there we can add a uh, um, one more step schedules of share. Uh, uh, it is a uh, manager error manager error and managing setting. Uh, when uh, when I manage the share. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, it should. Uh, Detect uh, whether the studio of share uh, is uh, is uh, is uh, uh, about to studio I just said. Uh, if it is, we also should skip the the quarter. Uh, do you understand what I said? Yeah. Um. Definitely, partially. Um, so, point one. I think you said, um, if the scheduler fails, we are not um, unsetting the quota. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, first manager, the quota is not a commit. Uh, mm. I found in the quota. Uh, uh, if we success to manage a share, uh, uh, the, uh, the the quarter uh, process is after uh, we uh, we get the real size of the share uh, through the driver. Uh, if the driver fail to get the real size, the quarter will not. Uh, we are not commit, but when we when we to delete the share, uh, we also deal with the quarter. the The share is, uh, uh, <coughs> yeah. <laughs> I see. So you have failed to manage a share. It has been set to manage error. And we assume that it is occupying one gigabyte. Is that what the problem is? Uh, uh, yes. I, okay. 
the uh, the key of this uh, the uh, the key of this topic uh, is to uh, to add uh, two more studies of share. Uh, this will help uh, uh, Manila to uh, to de to decide uh, uh, whether to de deal with the quota when delete the share or manager. Or a manager. There is a similar problem uh, that Kartaka uh, have uh, raised, which Kartaka have raised above. Uh, I have uh, left the bug open here. I think this. Oops. Yeah. So uh, the bug uh, Kartaka uh, reported is uh, regarding uh, we reaching over quota while we manage shares. So uh, we, this bug. Yeah. Uh, so can in this, sorry, proceed. Go ahead. Hi, Uh, this bug has uh, been fixed. Uh, no, it's it's related. It's not the same. I think it's not the same because it is uh, specifically uh, going over the quota, and in 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 uh, in what. If I understand what you're saying, uh, I've seen you're saying that um, the sh when the share driver fails to manage, we are uh, we are not unsetting the quota. That's that seems like a different problem. Yes, it seems like a, a different problem. I. I've looked at uh, the code here. Let me see. Let me change. So, if I understand this, when we have bugs in the quota system um, around errors here, um, and we should not we should not permanently um, increment the usage by one when we fail to manage. First of all, we don't even know what size it was. And second, um, um, we didn't successfully manage, so it's not part of the user's quota in Manila. Um, and then second, when we unmanage something that was not successfully managed, I guess where there's an error, we shouldn't decrement it if it fails in the unmanaged, right? Uh, and Hike Singh's proposing that we keep track of the fact that we had errors so that when exactly. we do an unmanage, um, we will know not to decrement it at that point because we weren't, we never incremented the usage. Yeah. And it seems like a reasonable. But how do we track this? Exactly. But how do we track this in the sense that how do we know? I mean, it's going to be hard to think. Uh, so here's the deal. Right? So we, you have a share that you, you, you uh, that's on your storage system. You you present the export location to Manala's API. It goes down to the uh, scheduler, looks at the uh, the host that you're uh, asking for. Uh, everything is good. We go down to the share manager and the share driver says, uh, oops, I can't manage this for some reason. Right. And, it, and we set the status to manage error. Right. And 
what, what Hayek seen saying is the, the I mean, if the uh, administrator wants to um, delete this share, we then go ahead and try to uh, clean up the quota. But then there were, we never assigned any quota for this, so we are really taking away from what the uh, what the uh, tenant already had or whatever, yes. which makes no sense. Um, but then, do we allow deleting manage error shares? It's I, I I I thought we needed to reset state before we deleted anything. Is that something yes. we allow today? We need to reset the state before deleting. But uh, deleting, uh, asking the backend to delete a share would cause the deletion of the share. Uh, so uh, some error can be occurred in the meantime, like uh, when we started managing the share and the share is it's still existing in the backend and we could like be asking to delete that share in the backend uh, at the end. So uh, another thing about unmanaged is that uh, some backends we uh, rename the the backend. Uh, so uh, if the backend uh, like renames the share in the during the operation and uh, that operation just fails and uh, we like unmanage the share, uh, the share uh, is like uh, the share in the backend will remain uh, modified. So. Uh, I mean, uh, this is not uh, all the backends. Uh, I'm giving the example for, uh, for that uh, what happens in the made up backend here. So uh, I mean, that's that's hard to think in a way that we could like prevent this and how could we track this. Uh, I. I don't think we cannot delete either. If the study of, study of share is a manage error. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, if we just uh, receive the study of share to, to, to available, uh, uh, this we we also not uh, 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 add the quarter. Uh, then we then we to delete uh, uh, it. I uh, I think the the uh, the quarter deal is also not right. Uh, no, you're right. You're actually right. So, if there's a way to, uh, when we, when the when the share is getting managed, uh, I mean, I don't know what the reasoning is to set the size to one. We, uh, I don't know whether we can set it to zero. Uh, uh, I mean, and and I don't know what breaks. Uh, it, it, over there, the comment seems to suggest uh, for it to work with the quota system, we need to set it to one. Uh, we, we we can't set it to zero apparently so but then to solve your problem i have seen i think the 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 thing is to set it to zero really because it's not a share we know about we don't know the real size so if it is zero if we, if we, if if it even if it does get into a manage error situation an administrator can delete the share and we will try to say, uh, you know, uh, I mean, we won't let them delete a manage error share. We can let them delete an available share or an error share. So they'll reset the state to error and then they'll try to delete the share. We can then look at the share size because it's zero. We'd go ahead and not, you know, worry about quota, quota calculation. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry, uh, can you? Rather, your key yes. points are in the past. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Yep, yep, yep. I violated that rule. I'll do that. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, we we see that the size to to zero can solve the uh, the uh, the size of quarter, but uh, cannot restore the 
number of uh, share quarter. Yes, uh, you're right. Uh, you're you're right. You're right. That's uh, a very we, good point. Uh, 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 if we add, uh, uh, just uh, I just just I said uh, we we add two, uh, we add uh, uh, one more schedule of uh, share. Uh, uh, if we uh, uh, if we uh, to delete uh, a share. Uh, which stadio is a major error, then we reset uh, the stadio of share to manager error deleting. Uh, in the uh, in the database level, in the database uh, in the API uh, level, if we uh, found the stadio of share is manual error deleting uh, then uh, uh, we will skip uh, deal with the, the the quarter of number or size uh, this because we feel the two manual we feel the two manager a uh, share uh, and uh, 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 and also not uh, uh, quad, uh, commit the quarter of number and size. How uh, I mean, with, with without changing the state, um, can we think of um, what is that? Using uh, allowing the administrator to delete an uh, and a share in manage error or unmanage error directly and that way we know we can't reduce quotas for something that is an unmanaged error or manage error can we allow the admin to delete share mm. uh, i think uh, uh, if the uh, I think if the admin have the right to manage the share, it also has the right to delete it. Yes, agreed. But right now, in the API, we prevent um, uh, deletion if you have a share uh, in any other state but available and error. Mm. Uh, if uh, uh, if the stereo is other stereos, uh, just uh, as uh, 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 available, uh, it will uh, uh, it will do the quarter uh, uh, as normal. Uh, we we just uh, detach uh, uh, if the stereo is. Uh, uh, whether the stadio is uh, managing managing error deleting. I I see what you're saying. Um, let me quickly check something. Does anybody know uh, when we start managing a share if we set the status to uh, managing? Yeah, we do. We set it to manage ink. Mm. 
This alone delete and share is that are not that are not either. Well, I was telling we we can allow element to leave share that are. We can now allow enemy to delete the share, delete share they are in image. When they try to delete the share, we will not perform any, not any. We not my any color patient uh e, 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 e also not the material code also not not Which are sure to be okay. another question is um in the mm. scheduler when the uh, manage operation starts do we set the status to uh, manage error if the scheduler fails that is another concern uh, so you 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 mean the the admin to delete those shares we will not perform any quarter the deductions uh, deductions changes uh, deductions uh, in in the function of delete share uh 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 it will uh, uh it will perform the quarter change well yes. not it, it does right now so i'm suggesting we change that uh and handle uh, deletion. I, yep, go ahead. Sorry. I I am not found this in the code. I I see I see from the code it uh, performs the code change. Change. It doesn't work. It doesn't work like this. Mm. We should major error. Uh, let me think. Uh, if 
，如果如果状态，哎，哎，呃呃 ，I I think more I think more more things， 呃、uh, ，when we when we delete the when we delete the share the share of our manager， 呃呃呃 ，be 呃。In, uh, uh, before to delete uh, uh, it, uh, Manila will uh, receive the schedule of share from manager error to delete him. Uh, so in so in the uh, uh, so in the uh, uh, in the in the in the quarter deal. Uh, 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 the the dat uh the database uh, uh will see the schedule of the share is deleting, but not a magic error. Uh, so it will also deal with the quota. The the key point uh, is the studio form major error to delete him. So you're saying it's going to be changed from manager to deleting by the time the decision is made to decrement. Uh, uh, so I so I think. Uh, 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 if we want to skip the uh, the the deal the skip deal the quarter, uh, uh, one way is to uh, we not uh, change the stereo uh, manual error to deleting, uh, or we we add uh, one more stereo uh, is uh, manual error deleting. This will tell the uh, database uh, should uh, it uh, uh, whether uh, do the quota. I, I guess I'm not understanding the um, the unmanaged flow right now. Um, I think it's because I've not used the API in a while. Uh, so I, I'll definitely have to do some reading. Uh, but if, if can you, I mean, both of these look like bugs to me. Uh, we should, and, and if you think we should change it, we should. So uh, we should probably open a bug, uh, report a bug, and yeah, I mean, please submit a patch. Uh, we'll take a look at it. I'll I'll definitely come back to this today. Um, I'll I'll take a, a deeper look at the APIs and see what what can happen, and I'll uh, I'll leave you a note on this etherpad. Uh. We can open box for Gotham, I would just suggest you change we to somebody in particular and be clear who's doing it. Yeah. Okay. So you want to I, 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 will, I will report a bug later days. Yeah. So Haixing, thank you for bringing up these issues. I think we agree that they're real bugs, um, and we can treat them as bugs. 
and we just need to work with you on the actual solution details in the code reviews. Okay. Anything else, Hyaxine? Uh, no, I have said what uh, I have said the oh. Awesome. Yes. Um, so please open these bugs and we can take a look. All right, uh, so I think uh, we've spent quite a bit without taking a break. Um, so, I, and our next uh, topic was supposed to be at uh, 1420, that's in five minutes, um, but we will, we'll, we'll actually push it down to 1425, uh, if you don't mind, uh, Douglas, and we'll come back at 1425. Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds good, no problem. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Uh, a short 10 minute break for now. All right. Uh, so we're now we're back to uh, the next topic on the agenda, which is uh, share server migration. So, Douglas, you're up. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So, uh... We are taking the discussions to this uh, separated uh, etherpad. So I have started writing down stuff uh, regarding the implementation and I'm doing some brainstorm here. Uh, I move everything to uh, to the end of the etherpad because uh, I don't think that we need to discuss the, the details of each component. I think that we have a, a main discussion on regarding uh, the, the entire approach that uh, uh, we are trying to propose here. So uh, this is uh, a feature that we are uh, planning to implement. So we are starting to write a nice spec for that. And uh, the idea is to implement a shared server migration. So uh, the use case would be uh, an administrator that wants to move all its shares uh, to a different destination and all this shared belongs to a, a shared server that is managed by Manila. So he wants to do that in an atomic way instead of moving uh, one share at the time uh, with the, the functionality that Manila today provides. So today Manila provides a share migration uh, functionality and uh, by moving uh, this share uh, uh, was a implement uh, some releases ago uh, uh, was decided that this share migration can be done in two phases. Uh, the first phase is uh, uh, regarding uh, actually copying the data. This can take some time. So uh, this first phase should be uh, the phase that uh, took more time to be completed. And the second phase that is triggered by the administrator is the cutover part where the actually uh, the, the host should be and uh, start accessing the share in the new destination. So uh, where we can have uh, a description at this moment. So uh, what we are, uh, uh, what we intend to do with this feature is to implement uh, the same approach, the same two phase approach at the share server, uh, at the share server level. So uh, today is not possible to do that uh, with the features that Manila provides. So we are planning to provide a new API, uh, new methods that follow the same idea that uh, share migration is doing. So share migration 
uh, is being proved for uh, at least three releases. So it has an idea that was uh, well discussed within the community. And uh, we think that this approach might fit the shared server also. So the point that uh, uh, we, we, we reach it is that uh, how we do the shared server migration. So uh, what we are proposing at this moment, and I want to collect some feedbacks from you, is that uh, we are proposing uh, a shared server migration that uh, should be handled by the driver itself. So uh, this means that we are not planning to, uh, uh, to transfer the duty to the share manager uh, that uh, uh, will be handling uh, share by share at a time. I mean, uh, we are planning to, to, to uh, ask the driver to move the entire share server and not asking him to move one share at a time. So that's the, the main idea. So uh, I think that uh, uh, by doing this, uh, we can have uh, a migration that's more efficient if the driver support it, uh, instead of uh, moving one share at a time and having the share manager uh, dealing with each one of the chairs migration. Uh, by doing this, uh, we are uh, probably uh, avoiding uh, errors and, and not avoiding errors, but avoiding uh, alternate uh, error treatment, like uh, doing some uh, tricky holdbacks uh, when uh, one share fails to migrate, for example. So this will be hard to maintain on the share manager level, I think. And that's why we are planning to move uh, this uh, responsibility to the driver level by providing to the driver all the information that's needed, not only the share server, uh, share server IDs. So uh, yes, the, so the idea is that as the share, we can also, as the share migration can also change the network uh, where the, the share server will be placed. So this is uh, uh, make totally sense since these destinations might be in a different backend and might be in a different subnet. So uh, this is a part of the implementation. Uh, uh, move to a different share type. Uh, uh, this might fit well. Uh, we need to think in more details because we don't want to change uh, some properties of the shares during this migration. We might dealing with uh, 200 shares by doing a share migration, for example. If we uh, we don't want to 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 change every share uh, property. Do it to a new share type, for example. Uh, moving to a new share type might be needed since uh, the destination might not uh, support the, the old share type, for example. Uh, we may have uh, the share type, uh, I don't know, uh, tied to, to a specific inevitability zone, for example. So this is just uh, one of the ideas. Uh, the cons for, for this proposal uh, by doing the driver level uh, share server migration is that the, the host migration won't be won't have benefits of the of that since it's implemented today at the the share level is doing share migrations and we also don't have at this moment a uh, first a first party driver that is uh, able to do that so we might need to to uh, uh, well, write uh, a new driver or uh, 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 or uh, uh, add a new enhancement to uh, uh, a, first part, a first part driver that we already have. So uh, this is uh, something that uh, we need to uh, also do uh, when planning this, this implementation. So uh, by the new operations that we plan, as the same we do with shares, uh, 
we are planning to add the share migration start complete. That is the two phase approach. Uh, we are planning also to add the share migration console in order to uh, finish uh, or stop the migration process when we are dealing at the first phase approach, uh, when we are dealing with the first phase of the share, the share server migration, and also uh, provided the migration get progress API in order to, to have uh, the progress of the, the migration itself. So at this point, uh, you guys have some considerations about that. I was trying to put some thoughts on the uh, etherpad, where uh, I can start talking. So you're saying this is going to be a backend level uh, API that you're going to call. Uh, just say, I mean, we're not going to enumerate the shares out for the uh, for for the uh, share driver. We're not going to enumerate the access rules. Nothing. No no share types. Not, all of this is not not given we're just going to say uh, hey uh, backend i need you to create a new share server in this uh, other ne network and this other backend and this other az perhaps and then we come around and say uh, uh, migration start yeah that's right and maybe um, we, we, we might need for, to figure out if we need uh, during the migration start any other information provided to the to the to the driver level, but yes, this is the idea. First, start creating the destination server, and then can be in a different network, and then starting the uh, the phase one of the migration. Okay, and, and that kind of makes sense. But what happens to the existing shares on that share server? On the, uh, should you allow management path operations when the share server migration is happening? Now, the idea is to block uh, every action uh, regarding those shares. In the first moment, we were thinking are just moving or changing the share server status, but this is something that user uh, might not be able to, uh, to see. So, we might need to move all the shared status uh, to a different status where the we to block and the user can see that the that share is not able to to receive any action at that moment. Yeah, that's right. okay. But what about, um, I mean, this would also affect snapshots and any new provisioning on that share server, right? At that point, so technically who does that kind of blocking? Yeah, you extend. Uh, at, from my point of view, uh, will happen in the same way that happens to shares. Uh, the difference here is that we are not going to uh, ask drivers to uh, start the migration of each chair. Uh, it's just it, uh, this is the difference. But uh, for sure, we need to iterate of all the shares, all the snapshots, uh, see if uh, there is some replicas in there, and if yeah, there is a share with an uh, uh, incompatible state uh, that might block the share server to be moved. But uh, at the end, the migration won't be at the share level but we will be at the share server level. But we indeed can uh, change any state uh, for shares and snapshots that are attached, that are associated with that share server. I, I wonder if instead of, you know, yeah, um, you'll have to block the uh, the shares and snapshots and whatnot, but, in, in, I mean, this uh, maintenance seems to be happening more on one, the share server, and two, the sh share network. 
and and not the individual shares right because um, the individual shares are yes they are not going to be accessible maybe for a duration uh, while this migration is happening but then there is there you'll have to take care of everything at that point shares snapshots replicas uh, share groups they, they literally block everything that's associated with a given share network so it feels like what the 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 blocking thing needs to be either a share server or a share network and you 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 see what i'm saying and and sh uh, blocking a share server may not uh, give you any kind of visibility given uh, given that in the api we don't check that we allow the driver to decide what share share server will serve a particular uh, share request uh, we we don't we we don't determine that uh, within the api so it feels like it could be at the share network level and for any other entity you you have you have the share network right there um, and you can use that to block in the api i mean this is just a suggestion based on what i'm yeah i don't think that we can block the share network at the moment since uh, share server is just uh, uh, an allocation for that share network so it might be just an instance uh, of a share server that's using one network network allocation from that share network but doesn't mean that uh, we might not uh, uh, change uh, anything regarding other share servers yeah that's actually a uh, fair point. I mean, you could have multiple share servers in a given share network. Okay, so uh, so very simply, when a share share server starts migrating, uh, you you would basically check that uh, with respect to all of its resources and and transition their states. And when the share server is completed migration migration, you're going to retransition re all of them back. Yeah. Okay. That's right. That's the, the main idea so far. Making all of these database transactions kind of scares me because it's not really, uh, I mean, it's going to be a massive set of, uh, it could potentially be a massive set of uh, resources that you're, that you want to block. It kind of feels like maybe there should be something else that, that you can go check before you allow any operation, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, you can't really convey that to the user, even if you were to store that state somewhere else. And that somewhere else is literally the share server status. Yeah, we can use the share, share server at that moment uh, and provide an user message, but uh, maybe at this moment the share state is still active and because mm -hmm. we still need to do a lot of uh, migration or database updates. Yeah, this might be a problem that we are going to face. Um, so I'm I'm trying to I'm being a little dumb about this. I mean, you guys are thinking of this from the Manila operations side and all of, all very appropriate. Um, I'm just trying to understand the use case a little bit, just partly so I can translate it to other backends and so on. Um, the export locations are going to change, right? As a result of the migration. So mounts will be destroyed and clients will need a new mount. I mean, just thinking of disruption and so on, the, the CRUD operations in Manila are the least of it. I mean, we need to block, we need to block them when they're in process, I agree. Um, I'm just trying to understand the, the actual use case driving this a bit. Um, it's a little vague to me at the moment, just, you know, load balancing, optimization, maintenance. What, can you tell me more about what, what's really you know, what the customer need is or something behind this um, that's um, driving it. You you have a big storage system. Yeah, that's running. Uh, it. It, has, it can have multiple share networks. It already does. It does, you know, 
DHS is full true and it has multiple share networks. Um, and we want to rebalance it uh, in the sense that the virtual servers that uh, the share, the storage appliance supplies, uh, one of them is getting too busy, say. It has too much on it. So you create a new one and you want to move them to the new one. Uh, and you want to have, uh, this will necessitate a new share network as well. And that means the users on who were on those shares will be taken out of service while you do it. So the, uh, the cloud administrator will communicate with them or something and tell them they're going to have an outage during this? Yeah, that's right. Um, this is the, the use case. Uh, these might uh, lead to uh, uh, very good overtime, but uh, at this moment, um, this is something that uh, other NetApp engineers uh, are dealing with. So I guess uh, uh, the customer wants to move uh, all shares with that share server for a new look okay. for a new location due to the overload. Yeah. So it this is storage okay. is trying to, to became full way they don't want to uh, add more this for this one since they have other ones that are are good to 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 receive. Uh, so this isn't shares. really a Manila responsibility, but a cloud administrator responsibility to let the end users know they're going to have an outage for their IO on the data path. Um, then during this time that the migration happens, also the CRUD operations through Manila would be blocked for all resources associated with it. So, I mean, it's might maybe more a matter of documentation and clear communication as to what, what this does. Um, um, I agree you're going to have to get all the, all the, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think, even though I think Gotham's question is good, is there a more, if I can phrase it this way, is there a more grand, more fine grained way uh, of what, what's blocked while you do this? I don't see that there is. I think you have to hit all the resources associated with it. And um, then I think the doc should make it very clear that uh, this is a um, disruptive, not only to CRUD operations, but also to data path. Uh, while uh, the migration's in process. Just for other readers, you know, I mean, you, your, your people that want to use this know this clearly, obviously, but uh, if I just come along and go, oh, it's a rebalancing thing, let me rebalance. <laughs> it's not, not trivial. Yeah, this is it's not, not a live, it's not a live migration for IO. Yeah. For sure. So it's not an objection, just an observation. Yeah, I, I we got use it. The word, my, we use the my, word migration in OpenStack sometimes when the idea is so you can just, you know, you users won't know the difference. Thanks, Tom. At least in theory. There are many bugs associated with it, but you know, like Nova migration and so on. Users won't, shouldn't know the difference. So in another concern here is uh, wh why the two-phase approach? What 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 exactly are you trying to achieve with that? Because we we had reasons to do the two-phased approach for uh, migration. It was it was based off of uh, my understanding of how migrations were done in the data center and stuff like that. But uh, but when when you know when we did it. Uh, I had to argue that the reason was a. Um, the, I mean, most most migrations in the uh, in the cloud are scheduled, and uh, you could have put it up somewhere, uh, and and you can you can give pro, pro, probable advance notice, and and two because the first the, there are actually distinct phases in this. Uh, there is a data copy. There is a deletion of the uh, of a, a deletion and cleanup for the for the. Um, uh, 
the, um, for the data. And three, the 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 thing was, you needed to maintain this uh, place where, in case something went wrong, there could be a rollback. So the, there there is a migration cancel that today in Manila that works even after phase one completes. And you, what that does is literally deletes the the the, the, the new destination and rolls everything back, uh, such that your previous share is untouched. So that's like the promise that Manila has with uh, phase one, that your source share is never deleted. You can continue to access it. It's even available for read access uh, in all all the drivers, but it's it's probably not available for write access in all drivers. Uh, that's why the whole non-disruptive. Uh, flag and all that stuff. So uh, uh, I have a similar question for you. You and you'll need to defend this as to why is this a two-faced approach? Can you roll back? Uh, can we pro provide the same promises that we were designing the share migration stuff with? Okay, so I can say for uh, our driver side, we can uh, do the same thing that we do. Uh, for shares, we can do for share servers level. So we can uh, uh, achieve the, the first phase by copying data and letting users to access their share. So uh, we are uh, going to uh, reduce uh, uh, about amount of time the cutover phase by doing this, since uh, uh, should take to uh, a long time to 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 copy all the data to the new destination. So I see that uh, uh, as uh, the main point for having this two-phase approach. And at least they, they, the admin can also schedule uh, this cutover phase by uh, triggering the complete operation since uh, as, this, as the same shell migration, but I think that for shell server migration to you took uh, more time to finish the cutover phase. So, uh, from my point of view, from our story point of view, it will be the same operations, but that take more time to be finished, to be completed. Yeah, but that, that's where I kind of have a this thing because I, I was just thinking about this for the for the let's say the two first party drivers that we know the architecture of, right? Like for um, the generic driver and uh, the container driver there is really no i mean there 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 you could in theory spin up a, a brand new share server and you could um, you know um, volume attach uh, the same uh, vo volumes to uh, this new nova vm and then copy the exports over and uh, and redo all of your exports that's approach number one for um, the share servers. The other aspect is you could use Nova's live migration, where it works, when it works. Uh, it, it 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 is it, it but it is a solution um, that you could approach this with. So there might be backends that can actually start this but not cancel this. They they might have some other way to handle this rather than uh, the way you are doing, which is um, uh, always a data copy before you. Uh, you cut over and stuff. This is not the same with uh, share migration. When you try to move something from one place to another, uh, you literally have to copy the data. But if 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 it's a virtual server, I feel there is something you can do smarter uh, in, in many cases. So you could start, but you couldn't cancel. Could you fail? You could fail, yeah. You can, you could yeah. fail and, so and it, screw this everything would be up. It's kind of a very dangerous thing to implement. And in that case, if the probability of failure is uh, um, not really, really, really low, because you're going to lose users' data. So yeah, we have. I, I worry a little bit about Manila facilitating that. <laughs> You can say, well, it's their responsibility, they will decide, but. Uh... No, you're right. I mean, technically, which is kind of why I'm, I'm leaning towards uh, uh, Douglas's initial proposal that we are not going to do this per share. 
uh, we, uh, I mean, it, it makes sense to say if the driver can do this and and take the responsibility of handling this via the back end, uh, like even the NetApp driver, I think th they have some APIs that they're going to do uh, that they're going to execute. Right, they're not really handling this entirely in the driver uh, by going through each resource that's associated with the share server. Yeah, I mean the fallback path on this is more theoretical than practical, right? Yeah, exactly. And so I think it's not I mean, worth even the... with my even with migration, we 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 I I I, I get yep. full responsibility for this. I've always argued for having you know open source host based fallback path or whatever so that we can do it, uh, but the actual the idea that customers would actually use that. And then we would have to support it in a real distribution scares the the jeepers out of me. Agreed. It, 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 it be so slow and perhaps unreliable as to be yeah. considered broken. And we didn't we didn't we didn't really have we don't really have uh, a generic solution per se because we we have uh, issues with uh, maintaining ACLs. And yes. on the destination share, we we have issues with even using the root user. Uh, I mean, first firstly, it's a, it's a wide open security hole uh, that we're we're somehow able to mount somebody else. Uh, I mean, a, a, a private tenant share, um, and then use a root user to copy yeah. copy out the data into. So anyway, uh, I I don't uh, have a problem with uh, having backends that have the capability and claim the capability and can do it successfully uh, have, have, have Manila enable that, um, that's fine. Um, I think that would involve two phase though, because um, if somebody can do it in one phase and do it safely, they can still do it two phase. I mean, the two phase. Uh, no, my, uh, my, my question with two phase is gonna be, is, is this cancelable? And, and that, that should probably be the, um, the, be the, you know, the, the contract. That at any point, at any point, you should be able to roll back uh, and and still have your yeah. pre pre okay. previous state. Right, right, right. I mean, if they can do it in one phase underneath and still roll back, <laughs> then they're honoring the contract, you know. But but the rollback capability is is critical for this. You're if you're going to have it. Yep. Right. Any other immediate concerns that jump out? Uh, no, but I don't think so. Uh, in this other pad, I have uh, some bullets with uh, some ideas of uh, things that we need to implement or change, how it's going to, to work. The most part of it, it's uh, very similar to share migration. So um, you guys won't be uh, seeing anything too much different from share migration here. Uh, the basic idea uh, was what we thought uh, earlier. Yeah, and the last one is that uh, we are providing a spec soon. So we are going to propose uh, uh, an in-progress spec uh, where we are start to adding these ideas and, 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 and you guys can take a look uh, when you have some time. Cool. Uh, all right, thank you, Douglas. Um, we have, uh, I mean, we have our next speaker already and uh, we might have a few more folks joining us. So let's just take a quick break, perhaps, and uh, start at uh, start in five minutes, if that's fine. Give people some uh, time to walk around, come back. Agreed. So we will. Thank you, guys. All right, see you here in five minutes. All right, welcome back. Uh, we're now at with no further ado, going to switch to the next topic, which is Manila CSI, uh, and over to Tom Barron for that. Hi folks, um, I'm Tom Barron. Um, we're gonna talk about Manila CSI in the next uh, 23 minutes. Um, so I want to start though by saying um, why uh, I think Manila CSI is an interesting area, an exciting area for, for Manila and for OpenStack as a whole. Uh, and it's partly an explanation to my fellow Manila cores here as to why I've been off going, to working on other things, 
promoting this uh, a bit. Um, th there's a narrow answer, which is that, you know, as you know, CSI provides storage um, um, to, among other, to container orchestrators and paramountly to Kubernetes. Um, but, um, and that uh, Manila allows for read write many access, whereas, for instance, Sender uh, CSI would just allow read write only. Um, that's not 100% true because now you can use a sender with uh, raw block uh, access and have read write uh, many with raw block. Um, but if you do that, you don't have a file system on it, and all the uh, little applications sitting out there. Um, that people want to run stateful storage for, except for a couple, um, assume you have a file system. And if you have a node local file system, as you would with Sender when you do it, uh, making uh, XFS or AVXD4, that is not going to be read write many across your cluster. You're only going to be able to uh, use it in one pod. Um, so, um, but the broader answer um, is that OpenStack is changing. The world is changing. Um, arguably, the users that were on OpenStack are moving over to Kubernetes for the large part. Um, that they say things like, uh, I shouldn't have to learn how to manage a machine, a uh, virtual machine, just in order to do my DevOps job. Uh, I'd rather use a container orchestrator. Um, at the same time, there seems to be a big place for Manila, I mean, for OpenStack as an infrastructure as a service uh, provider. So people who want to have the equivalent of Google Cloud Platform or Amazon Web Services uh, in their own enterprise, or if they're service providers running public clouds or private clouds for customers, um, and where they want to have a hard multi-tenant separation and they want to have, um, uh, self-service, um, elastic provisioning of infrastructure. Uh, and OpenStack is really the only game in town for that besides proprietary public clouds. Um, so um, there are a lot of uh, companies who want to not have their users run over to use Amazon or GCS instead, keep their data on premises, not have outposts come in instead, et cetera. So there's a big place for that. In that world, uh, I put an example, by the way, of ideas about how OpenStack might play in that. OpenStack is not a virtualization platform. <laughs> That's not the vision of it. It, is, um, it provides compute, network, and uh, storage, and virtualization plays a role, but compute may be their model. Um, Nova is less relevant. Um, the Nova consumers and compute consumers end up being um, Kubernetes administrators. And the Kubernetes administrators have end users that don't need to know anything about Manila in order to operate. Um, so that's the vision. Um, and it's a vision where you have uh, hundreds of, of um, Kubernetes clusters running on a common infrastructure provided by an OpenStack cloud. They don't know anything about each other, the ships in the night to each other. Um, so if, if we evolve towards a world like that, Manila has a very big role to play, I think. Um, I put a reference in there to the Teapot project, which uh, outlines one possible way uh, that kind of world could evolve. Um, you'll see Manila having a big role in storage there. And partly it's because Manila does not serve up storage by a, a hypervisor. It can serve it to bare metal and just serves over the network. So it can serve to bare metal uh, and containers on bare metal. Um, using its core functionality without any special hacks. Um, so I want to introduce you to Robert Vashek. Uh, Robert is the author of the Manila CSI plugin. Um, and he is here along with, he, he had a Google Summer of Code um, um, fellowship last summer, um, in which he worked on the um, um, snapshot capability for, for Manila CSI. Um, and uh, his, his uh, mentor for that project, Thomas Schmatana, is also here. Uh, guys, would you say hi to this group? They're mostly Manila people. Um, a lot of them um, are familiar with uh, some other CSI and container orchestrators that are vendor specific. Yes, hi. I'm Tomas. I work as a engineering manager 
uh, in the OpenShift engineering team, and among others, uh, the storage people reports to me. That's how I got to this project, actually. Thanks so much, Robert. Hello, um, I'm Robert. Uh, I've been working on uh, Manila CSI since, well, as uh, Tom said, uh, there was this uh, Google Summer of Code thing last year. And prior to that, about three or four months prior to that, uh, we've released the first version of CSI Manila. And we've been working on that ever since then. So, yeah. So, Robert, can you say just a little bit about um, the core provisioning and snapshots and topology and your, your view for, you know, how, how, how CSI has evolved and how you've kept uh, an little CSI up to date? Right. So, uh, the core design of CSI Manila is, uh, you know, Manila as a service uh, provides storage uh, for multiple storage systems or control over multiple storage systems. And that's the similar approach as we took for CSI Manila, where CSI Manila is only the provisioning uh, tool which communicates with, with uh, the Manila service. And once we have those storage resources provisioned up and running, uh, we can use those, consume those on uh, compute nodes uh, through a dedicated CSI driver. So let's say we are provisioning for uh, an NFS uh, storage system. We all create the chair through the CSI Manila plugin. And once you want to consume that share on a pod in your workload, uh, the Manila CSI plugin will, will use NFS CSI, which is another separate uh, CSI plugin that's dedicated for that particular storage type. And that's basically who is uh, consuming that uh, storage resources. So uh, Manila CSI is uh, sort of conductor of uh, the storage, but the actual usage is then offloaded to plugin that is responsible for that type of storage. Uh, then, uh, well, uh, if you are not familiar with uh, all of the intricacies and parts of uh, CSI. So there are a couple of uh, components that handle different types of operations that you can do on storage. So you can provision. So that's basically creating and deleting shares. Uh, there is a special component for that. That's the external provisioner in uh, Kubernetes. And that's part of the whole uh, CSI plumbing. And then for uh, snapshots, there is, again, a separate tool for that. So there is uh, the external snapshot. And once you have all of those components uh, deployed on your cl cluster, you can you know, use all of the operations that the plugin supports now so that's for now uh, another plant feature is uh, resizing uh, the shares that's com coming up uh, there is plant support for uh, some proper um, uh, monitoring because that's what we'll be needing for uh, CFS snapshots and um, yeah, that's as far as the planning goes. Thank you. Um, people have any questions about this so far? For these guys? Okay. Um, um, so Mike, uh, 
Fedosin's having technical problems, but um, um, he's, um, he is the author in OpenShift of uh, the um, second while I respond to him for a second. I've, thank you for bearing with me. Um, he has written um, in, open sh in, in upstream uh, Manila CSI, which Robert has authored, there are Helm charts that you can use uh, to actually install the plugin. And they work great. Um, if you go back at the, and look at the um, uh, Shanghai summit, I, I showed off Robert's stuff using uh, Helm charts uh, and manifests and so on. Um, in OpenShift, which is uh, our distribution, there's an open source reflection of it, um, of Kubernetes. Um, we use the operator pattern where, um, you know, the, the Kubernetes operator pattern where you uh, um, have a desired state and, and the system, you know, runs control loops to bring, bring it in line with it. And uh, all, the, all the storage in OpenShift, uh, all the storage plugins have, have operators that install them and maintain their life cycle and upgrade them and so on. Uh, so that's used. Um, and um, Mike made a little demo, which I can try to share here of uh, just how easy it is to get uh, stuff installed with that operator. Uh, Gotham, do I just click share screen here and try it? Yes, go for it. Uh, let me try this, this is quick. Do you guys see a Manila CSI driver usage screen? Not yet. Okay, let me try clicking again, share screen, click the window, ah, select the window. Okay, it just says desktop one. So I guess I'll share my whole desktop one. You see it now? Yeah, we can see it now. Yes, okay. All right. So this is just, you know, basically what you're going to see here is that there's just some YAML. Um, this would be run by the cloud op, uh, the, the uh, you'll see OC instead of um, um, cuddle here. But um, the Kubernetes administrator, the OpenShift administrator, um, I'm, I did the wrong one. I'm showing what the user shows. Okay, let's pretend it's already installed, pardon me. Um, this is how easy it is for an end user to uh, create um, PVCs, get them fulfilled, and use them. And what we're just showing here is that we can create pod, multiple pods, mount them on multiple, you know, they're running at arbitrary points in your um, arbitrary worker nodes in the cluster. They're mounted uh, and you can write to them um, from both locations. So this is familiar stuff to people who have seen this probably. Um, um, We're writing hello Manila and one from one pod, reading it on another, et cetera. So it's the kind of thing Manila can do, right? Um, what I'll make the point is that end users here don't know anything about VMs. They don't really know much about, um, they don't know that it's Manila fulfilling this. They know that they're using a storage class. The, um, this is when I say, uh, the OpenShift or Kubernetes end users don't need to know any about that. And basically they um, copy template applications, they're DevOps type people, right? They copy te template type applications that happen to be stateful and need multiple writes, um, write many capability and they can just do it. Um, the OpenShift administrator on the other hand, um, needs to create the storage class. And when they create a storage class, they need to know that it's Manila CSI that's fulfilling it. 
and they basically need to know um, which share types are available to use corresponding to that storage class. Now, um, that said, um, when you, I'll switch back to the original um, demo I was going to show here, which is even faster. This is the operator doing the install and the operator actually goes and discovers the available share types and by default will set up a storage class corresponding to each of these. So here, here the persona working with this is a open shift operator or a Kubernetes operator. And the Kubernetes operator knows they're using a Manila CSI plugin. Um, and unless they go out of their way, they're just going to pick up whatever share types are available and end up with uh, storage classes available for those. Um, the open shift administrator or Kubernetes administrator is an ordinary OpenStack tenant with no special privileges, no special visibility, um, and anything. So that that's just a you know again they're just using some YAML. This is temp. This is a canned YAML that they just you know change a couple values to make it work for themselves. Um, so that's where um, the OpenShift develop. I'm going to go back to unshare here, hopefully. One sec. Gotham, can you unshare me? Yeah, I think that's what I did. Okay, okay, cool. That's why I, um, it suddenly worked when I was clicking buttons randomly. All right, um, so um, I hope I've given you a little picture about basically how easy it's going to be for the end user of Kubernetes uh, to use this on the one hand and for the Kubernetes administrators on the other to get it installed with an operator, it's pretty darn easy with the Helm charts too because Robert has set them up um, so that you can just copy them and tweak a couple things, you know, hook in your own secrets for operating with, open, you know, your refer to your cloud's YAML file uh, when making secrets for operating with the um, OpenStack cloud and stuff like that and it'll just work. So we have uh, five minutes left for Q&A discussion questions, either about vision, implementation, stuff that Robert can answer for you, so on. Any thoughts? So I, uh, I had one, make quick, but okay, go for it. But I can, I can actually let other people answer because I can always find you guys. Um, the, uh, the, the, anybody else have questions? First. So the the cool thing about this is it works with um, with, with right now with NFS and CephFS. Uh, it, it does not support the other um, protocols that Manila has, but adding those things is not um, is not a uh, you know is not a big deal. I think. Uh, I mean, if there are backend uh, vendors that are interested in them, we should probably, uh, you know, they should come and co collaborate on the cloud provider OpenStack repository. Um, but, but I was just wondering, what is, what is it that this project team can do to make things easier for uh, for Manila CSI? Is there uh, is there some sort of a wish list, some something that you you folks right now are looking for um, from the project team? So are you asking Robert and Tomas what, what Manila can do to help enable? I'm asking ourselves, yes, uh, in, in a sense. Uh, is there something uh, that we'd like to, you know, focus on uh, build in this, in this upcoming release to make things easier? For the CEP, CEPFS backends, we want to enable the create uh, share from snapshot and and thanks to uh, Douglas we have some in, nice infrastructure uh, in place for doing async 
creates from a snapshot or other kind of operations like that. So I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, we just awesome. need to do that. Um, one thing I will say, just in case anybody on the call is listening or whatever, is that we need public clouds um, where we can run upstream um, CI. Um, so if, you, if there are any public clouds available or even somebody has a private cloud where it's available for us to run on an OpenStack implementation um, with, um, for example, an NFS backend of, you know, it can be any, I mean, this is a clear, you know, this is, people sometimes think, oh, you guys are all about Ceph. No, the CI uses Ceph because it's software defined. Okay, obviously the Red Hatters in it care about Ceph and Ceph working and stuff like that. And the people at CERN care about Ceph and Ceph working. But the main reason for CI right now with, all, with us is just, we need something software defined um, that we can deploy on, on clouds. So if anybody's doing that, that's great. Uh, has has anything we can do on that front? That's great. Um, the other thing I'll just quickly say um, is, um, you know, this is why one should not use Trident for OpenStack. And when I say that uh, as a joke to people, partly, um, you should know that I also say this is why one should not use Ceph CSI for OpenStack. One should not use a backend specific or even a you know, combination of backends, but vendor specific solution for OpenStack. We should use OpenStack storage when OpenStack supports Kubernetes. Um, this is a battle I fight every day um, and, you know, within my own company uh, as well as publicly. Um, so, um, I said it provocatively because there were a bunch of net appers here in terms of Trident, uh, but you know you should know. Is the point is that we should use cloud provider OpenStack, which understands Keystone multi-tenant separation, um, in order to help enable this um, new world where we have lots and lots of Kubernetes clouds running as separate tenants that don't know anything about each other but share infrastructure. Um, and they can do that without having to go rent from uh, AWS or, or GCP. Michael, you're just in time, Mike. Um, I did your demos for you and didn't do the justice, but I uh, don't tell people I pretended I did all the work. No, I didn't. I gave you credit. Um, this is Michael uh, Fedosin, who has uh, Hello. Um, implemented the uh, um, the uh, OpenShift operator um, and all that goes with it. There's an operator lifecycle manager. There's a, there's a lot of work to build um, the plugin into a product um, in OpenShift. In OpenShift, we make things uh, um, for, for, we believe, a lot of added value. We add uh, quite a bit of complexity, including uh, lots of interesting roles and uh, security um, concerns and so on, uh, uh, cert certificates and everything, just in order to be able to run. Um, and all that complexity was hidden behind that 24 second demo we did of him, um, uh, that Mike did of uh, the OpenShift operator actually installing the CSI. Uh, Mike, we're limited on time, and I promised to stay to a half hour, but I'm going to violate it and say, ask, do you want to have like a minute or two to tell people anything? I'm sorry, no, uh, you're limited. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I never, I've never used Zoom before, uh, and it seems like they have some trouble with Google authentication. Uh, yeah, so I believe you... So the demo, and this is how actually it works. Uh, the inst there are two ways of installation of the operator itself. First, using the OLM, Operator Lifecycle Manager, and I believe it will be the preferable way of installation. And the second one I use in demo just uh, by applying manifests from the deploy folder, uh, like roles, roles uh, role bindings, service accounts and the deployment itself. 
So uh, if you use the operator lifecycle manager, it's even easier than what I showed in the demo because it's pretty just much kind of the same kind of automatically. Yeah, if you use uh, the OLAM, uh, you can do, uh, do it in web interface. Just click one button and then it magically appears. Uh, but yeah, complexity is pretty much the same. You just need to apply several manifests and that is. Then to deploy the driver itself, uh, manual driver, I mean, you need to create um, a custom resource. Uh, this is a singleton, so you do, you can have more than one entity of manual driver in your uh, cluster. Uh, it's controlled by the operator. Uh, when you deploy the custom resource, it will install everything you need. Uh, in OpenShift, it also creates a credentials request, so you don't have to create a manual secret uh, manu uh, with credentials manually. It will be automatically generated from uh, system secret, uh, which, it, which is clause.yaml actually. Um, yeah, so if your manually uses self signed certificates, it's, it also will be handled by setting a uh, special parameter in the configuration. Uh, what else? Yeah, so I believe that is. Uh, also, it will create all storage classes for you. Because for each manual share type, it will create a storage class, CSI manila, for example, default or SEP or NFS, and so on. So you don't have to do it manually. Uh, and to, uh, to delete the driver, you, you just delete the resource, custom resource. All things that were provisioned will be automatically destroyed, including cl uh, storage classes, deployments, stateful sets, yeah, uh, everything. Uh, yeah, so I believe this is all, yeah, all the complexity is hidden in the operator. You just need to deploy the operator, which is one click installation, then deploy the resource, which is also like one click installation. You saw it in the demo. Yeah, well, thanks, Mike. I'm sorry you didn't deliver the demo yourself, but I did try to convey uh, the uh, uh, idea, I hope, successfully mm -hmm. that uh, um, there's been a lot of smart work, um, both at uh, Robert's level uh, upstream and then at your level in OpenShift to make, uh, to make it simple. Uh, you know, a lot of hard work, to, uh, complicated work to make stuff simple. Um, thank you for your help. <laughs> no, uh, I'm mostly a mature leader these days, um, but um, um, and a debugger. <laughs> um, but um, we will um, uh, we will close this session. Gotham, I'll turn it back to you because we have to respect our time limit. Yep, absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for doing this, uh, Tom, Mike. Um, th thanks for joining us, Robert, and Do Tomas. Thanks everybody. Um, I, I did want to add just one last thing. Uh, if if you didn't catch it from to, uh, Tom's uh, talk, a lot of people ask, uh, do I need to use everything from the cloud provider OpenStack repo to use this uh, thing? Uh, which it, it, it's not the case. Um, unless CSI code is in the cloud provider OpenStack, uh, and but all of those parts of cloud provider OpenStack are individually deployable. Um, we're not con we're not in the cloud controller. Fa uh, fabric i guess or, or whatever that they're trying to build um and and, and that will call into the manila csi but not uh, there's no hard dependency to deploy the whole thing awesome uh, anything else about this topic anybody else Great. We're really glad to have this demo and uh, really cool to see all this happening. Uh, like I said, we, we are happy to prioritize anything that comes in as a request from the Manila CSI uh, folks in, uh, in that place. All right, uh, at this point, um, we will switch over to the next topic. I'm sorry we can't take a, uh, a short break, um, but we will uh, uh, as soon as this one's over. Thank you, uh, folks that joined us for the Manila CSI uh, talk. Uh, if you, you're welcome to stay, uh, stay back and uh,
in likely in about 20, 25 minutes, we'll grab some beers. Uh, so you can, you're welcome to actually stay back and have some beer with us. Um, and, um, but otherwise for now it's, we're, we're going to be switching over, uh, to Vicky and, uh, Maury to bring us an update about, uh, OSC. Um, we already did a session on OSC, so this is a sp particular issue, um, that they want to talk about. So over to you, Vicky and Maury. Hey, so I think we can give some, some context on that. Um, I'm pinging, um, I don't know his name actually, or her name, uh, she Tema in the OpenStack SDKs team. I think he's um, here. Oh, Artem, okay, yep. thank you, hi. hi. Um, so the concern kind of started with um, when Mori found out that there were a lot of commands that actually are in the general um, or the common use commands that we have in OpenStack client right now. And um, it's uh, kind of a bit user unfriendly to have that replicated and also of course uh, it seems a bit um, uh, also quite um, not easy to understand for the end user. Um, so we were thinking about how we can do to improve this and um, apparently it's a concern that also was um, on the OpenStack SDK team. Um, I don't know if uh, you have started talking about this on how to implement this or if there is some some base work in which we can a step uh, maybe you can take the lead on this one Artem. yeah well honestly speaking i'm quite surprised there is a really huge momentum on openstack client during this ptg what surprises me but makes me really happy pretty much all in the community understand that user current user experience is not really very well and we are trying to do on all possible angles to do something on top uh, with that with regard to osc the huge momentum uh, what we are currently also trying to do is really a deprecation of individual clients for from each service in favor of really open stack client uh, we what we are trying to really do as a community goal is multi-release community goal for the moment but basically you, you know that nova comes with their own client which is not really a plugin to osc but they are really something own absolutely separated uh, neutron had the same glance has the same and this is breaking completely user experience uh, from that point of view. Users are not really knowing which tool they would need to use for which particular uh, purpose, what will work best in each individual case. So what we are trying really to achieve is to not, I wouldn't say force, but uh, we try to achieve basically that all the individual clients are completely abandoned and all the community is investing their time into working in OSC. Let it be even uh, how it is with Manila, it is a plugin into OSC, but still really that OpenStack client as a user experience is coming first. So this is our goal. With regard to that movement, we have identified really quite some stuff that we need to adapt on the OSC really in its core, for example, how it uh, handles uh, micro versions. Uh, and also there are some other interesting stuff which is coming from different angles. So for example, in the glance, we have a funny situation that they allow unknown attributes to be set on the image. So basically, we, we have a schema of the image which is default, but then on each cloud, there is possibility to extend it with something additional. Uh, we have also identified that there is pretty much similar situation in case of Neutron, but which is which was not known to us and mostly to nobody in case of using of some really very special plugins, which is also something that we need to address in the OSC on the pre pretty much global level. So what actually I'm trying to talk about, we have identified, especially during this PTG, that there is a uh, 
quite a lot of work that we need to do in the OSC to improve overall, imp uh, overall user experience of that. Uh, talking about those common tools uh, or common commands in the OSC, I agree it is really currently a mess. And the problem is mo most likely that in the last couple of years, no one was really trying to align on that. Uh, unfortunately, Dean was really pre pretty busy with some other activities and therefore in the last couple of years, OSC went more or less headless some <laughs> to some extent um so what we have achieved or what we have done in a couple of months back we have joined sdk and the cli team so that we have more powers and we have let's say more control more momentum more momentum on that so uh, at the moment what we are trying really to achieve is that osc uses directly sdk in all cases so instead of repeating all the API calls from different angles with the different parameters, which is making it incredibly complex, we are trying instead to use SDK so that basically we, we don't repeat our own work. Uh, Nova team is currently also switching uh, their, own, um, their own communication in the backend really also to use uh, SDK to communicate with other services, with clients and, and everything else. So uh, again, we are trying to switch as much as possible uh, from the OSC to the SDK. And this particular case, for example, with listing quotas, with listing limits, uh, availability zones, I would say it's also fitting quite good to be implemented in the SDK um, because we have a really pretty funny technical challenge in the OSC side with those plugins are good. They are really awesome, but they are incredibly painful from the performance point of view. I don't know whether you have noticed or not. Uh, in, in, in our case, pretty, pretty often, if you simply do OpenStack client image, uh, OpenStack image list, it might take you even up to eight seconds until you get the results back. This is all happening because of huge overhead on the plugin loading. So OSC code is going, trying to search all the plugins, try to initialize them. Even this is this might not be absolutely mandatory. So what we are trying to do is to have as less plugins as possible. Uh, we would definitely try to optimize the logic there, uh, but as of as of as of now, this is not 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 yet achieved. So uh, the proposal, how I see this in Etherpad, try to do something else also in a pluggable form. I would say this might lead to a problem from the performance point of view and then from the user experience point of view also because uh, each client, each individual client uh, in, the, in the way that opens the client plugin, let's, let's say it like that, uh, would need to inject itself into some common procedure and in case in OSC, we are doing changes, trying to restructure and do some interface changes, it immediately breaks everyone. We had the situation a couple of months back when we have switched uh, OpenStack image from using Glance client to use SDK. Everything went fine, but all of a sudden, sometime later, uh, we have found that some additional, I don't remember exactly what was that, but there was some additional a uh, plugin to the OSC, uh, which was absolutely not on our radar, it got broken just because the interface was adapted. We were never considering this really as an interface to the outside, but it got broken. So from that point of view, I would prefer really not to have any plugins into something that should be global on the OpenStack landscape. Quotas, we are trying from the API point, uh, from the API seek point of view, really to generalize some, some of the APIs. How the quotas should behave, how the tagging should behave, how the limits should behave, and so on and so on. 
So the most effective way in this particular case would be really if we implement in the SDK exactly methods like list all the quotas. You can pass as a parameter for which service would you like to do uh, list quotas and then basically the SDK itself is going, uh -huh, okay, I need to list quotas for the Manila or I need to list quotas for the Nova which would be more efficient from the OpenStack client point of view. There would be no third party dependencies. It would not need to initialize any plugin at all. It would be the most efficient operation. On the other hand, also we maintain compatibility and basically CLI and SDK are both in our hands. So we definitely know when we break something and we ensure that it, it continue work, working. So uh, yeah, as I said, my approach here would be really that if we go back to SDK and try to generalize such common things to be implemented there, rather than trying to come with some plugin approach. Well, the, uh, I mean, uh, this is uh, a little uh, unexpected for us, given that we were uh, under the impression that the plugin interface had, was solid um, when yeah, we started the, the work. Interface, the plugin interface is solid, but if we if we would like to have something like plugin into plugin, this this becomes really creepy. I, I understand. Yeah. So so you're you're suggesting that if you if you were if you were to look for any of these common uh, things, we first go in through the OpenStack SDK route and uh, and have something from there query uh, query something uh, right. I mean, have support yeah. in the SDK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let the SDK call in whatever service um, mm -hmm. uh, and and stuff. That 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 definitely makes sense and makes things easier for us if we uh, that we don't have to maintain anything inside the plugins. Um, exactly. And we we were also looking to work on the OpenStack SDK and I'd add uh, Manila APIs. Currently, there are none uh, in the OpenStack SDK, um, mm -hmm. and this this is uh, the, but, but we were treating that as a parallel effort. For us, um, the main thing was to catch up in our plugin interface uh, full feature parity with what we have with the uh, current CLI. Um, mm -hmm. And the, uh, that said, I think. I mean, you're saying we uh, you're you're looking to actually drop as many plugins as uh, as possible. Uh, no, so no, 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 no. Don't uh, don't think I was meaning the in in that sense. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, what we what I was trying to do is that we have individual clients, not the plugins into OSC, but we have individual clients. So Manila client is a plugin to OSC. Everything yeah. is right here. Nova client is not a plugin to OSC. So what we are trying to do is really to drop those. Uh, on the other hand, when we are talking about plugin to OSC, we definitely need to rework the mechanism, how the plugins yeah. are being registered, really, how they are being initialized, whether it is important to initialize plugin at all to execute one command. There are surely problems when you are trying to go into the interactive mode or when or OSC simply doesn't know which plugin which uh, would bring which commands. So this is really pre pretty cre creepy area that we would like to improve in the future. Uh, but exactly, in, in this particular case, for the common commands, my personal opinion, and basically I understood from other part this topic. Um, Victoria was pinging me sometime in the, in IRC, and but I was not really getting to hundred percent what what are we talking about. So I have seen and understood what we are talking about. Let's say like uh, half an hour ago, and mm -hmm. this is my current current opinion how it should be done in the most efficient way. I agree. Because as I said, having each plugin to try to inject something additionally into some common command would mean that uh, in case the OSC, the user of the OSC invokes give me quota, uh, the OSC will need to understand, okay, I might have plugins here from Nova, I might have plugin from Manila, which will definitely require that those are being initialized, which will definitely have a performance impact, and that's bad. Yeah. If, if we implement an SDK side, just a single function, please give me all the quotas, 
the SDK would be responsible in figuring out, okay, I know that uh, quota for Nova can be found there, quota for Manila can be found there from the API, and, and that's it. This would be the most efficient way to, to do this. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that, uh, and and I was trying to present it as two different choices, um, because that's where I mean yesterday I was just going through the code to see you know where where can I plug in and uh, OSC seemed like the best place to put it, but of course I saw some uh, you know some of the common commands going through the plugin route, so that's why I added that as an option. But yeah, I, I agree, it, it makes no sense, uh, especially given that you want to improve the uh, the plugin interface to you know perform better and having one other thing to add add to that or x other things to add to that is not not fun mm -hmm. so as i said we are trying currently to use sdk as much as possible and to actually primarily as the only interface to access api mm. currently osc is in some cases it's re-implementing api requests in some cases, it relies on the individual clients so that they are wrapping API calls. But instead, actually, the idea of SDK was exactly to implement all of that. So OSC primarily uses SDK to do any API request. And it would be a target of the SDK really to have support, at least to some extent, for those bindings for each individual service. And the more we have there, the more user experience we can offer to the client. Yeah. And since currently, yeah, it's quite unfortunate situation that uh, Manila API is currently not covered in the SDK. I know there was a huge patch and uh, if you guys would like to continue on that, I would suggest you uh, to start uh, in doing implementation more or less on the resource by resource basis. Yeah. Since one huge patch, which is adding two line, two thousand line of codes, is really incredibly complex for everyone. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, we were th thinking about uh, along those lines, and this is something. Uh, uh, I mean, Victoria and I were talking as well to resurrect that because the uh, the person that was working on that is not uh, working on it anymore. Uh, so yeah, we'll take this feedback. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, we're kind of running over. I, I want to give it back to Maury and Vicky uh, to ask any specific questions on this. I have some questions, but Maury, do you have any specific for, for this? Well, as I said, it's just an idea which came to my mind like half an hour ago. So there is no concrete plan, uh, but I think I will start working on that stuff in really near future, at least to get some stuff in the SDK. Um, yeah, and then basically it would be up to you to fill in this step to, to ask Manila. We can basically, you see, even from the SDK point of view, those quotas, you limits and everything else, those are also pretty common things. So also there, we might try to think how we try to generalize them as well. It's basically the interface should be same for every service. Like Nova, Manila, Neutron doesn't really matter. It's just the endpoint to which you are sending the API request is different. So here we might also think from the SDK point of view how to try to implement this without really having even the full implementation for the Manila, for example. Yeah, sure, and we can we can certainly fit in. I don't think, uh, I mean, we've tried to keep it as consistent as possible to Nova and Cinder. So. Mm -hmm. uh, let me say uh, say like that. I would assume that in one month it should be there, just because during this PTG, like like Monty, I got so many tasks that I will never be able to do in one night. Uh, but yeah. I think during during the months I will come up with some initial changes there that we can work on further. Awesome. Vicky, Mori, anything else? Not for me. I think we can 
uh, ask those questions later in IRC and keep thinking about it and discussing it later. Sure. Uh, but j j just to ensure, your interface on uh, quotas, limits, it is pretty much standard as everywhere else, right? Pretty much. I think uh, the, the, it is a little, um, I mean, I think it conforms to uh, Nova a lot more than Cinder. There is, uh, I mean, user level stuff that we do, I think that is different from uh, from Cinder. Uh, but I can, I can check and we can talk about it. Um, uh, I mean, and, and Mori has a patch up for quotas implemented as a plugin option right now. So you can say OpenStack share quota show, OpenStack share quota list, OpenStack share quota update. These are the commands yeah. that she's trying to add. Um, and that's when all of this discussion started. Um, mm -hmm. So, but then when I was looking at the common implementation for um, Cinder No One Neutron, it felt like we, we, it's easily pluggable. Yeah, you don't need to over, uh, yeah, what, how, how, how should this word be? To overestimate. <laughs> there are really some funny, weird cases when everything seems to be same, but devil is in details. So it's impossible always to say, yeah, it's absolutely generalizable. No, unfortunately, it isn't. Quotas are there, but for each service, they look a bit different. So this generalization should be already covering those differences. What might be challenging. But pretty sure we will definitely solve this. Yep. Awesome. Uh, it was it was great to have you here, Artem, and uh, definitely good to talk to you and, and get to know you because we can um, reach out to you with respect to code reviews uh, when we mm -hmm. when we start sure. the OpenStack SDK work as well again. Sure, absolutely. Would be glad to support you on that. Awesome. Great. Cool. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Thanks, yeah, for working on this. Okay, thanks, guys. Then see you later. Yep. Yep. Uh, everybody else. Uh, so we are um, going to take a short break and uh, come back. We're we're actually at the end of the uh, PTG, and I am going to stop recording. Uh, we are going to uh, spend the next hour uh, just grabbing beer and and talking stuff. Uh, ho uh, and yeah, I hopefully don't want to talk share server migration with uh, Douglas when he's uh, with his beer. So uh, let's, let's, let's do some fun stuff. Um, I might have to get into the DC room uh, really quick to uh, do some, uh, you know, some pulling for some uh, Manila stuff that we brought up, but you won't miss me. Uh, I'm sure Tom will keep the room happy. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so we'll uh, we, we'll connect back here in about five minutes. Is that fine? Please grab uh, beer and yeah, you can be late. You can you can come back here in ten minutes. But I I do definitely want to see you um, with some beer or or some whatever libation <laughs> that you prefer. Uh, Hold on a second. Before that, uh, for for the sake of the recording, um, we are uh, stopping again. Thank you so much for being part of the um, uh, Victoria Cycle PTG, and uh, we have a lot uh, that we took down in terms of action items, like we do every cycle. We're just infamous for that. Where this is, if if there is any group that can get stuff done, uh, there uh, it is. This one. Um, I'm fairly confident about that, uh, having worked with all of you uh, over the last release and multiple releases before that. So thank you so much, um, and see you all in five minutes.